over the weekend, I wrote a program I, I think is kind of interesting. Uh, it's a program that emulates a very simple dot matrix printer and emphasis here is on simple. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like. Uh, so here we've got the readme that describes a little bit about the program. I'm just providing a bit of background here for that simplified uh, virtual printer. Uh, again, it really is very simple, but uh, just to kind of bit of a background here. When I was growing up, we had a nine pin Epson dot matrix printer. And I, th I think everyone I knew had one too. Now in a dot matrix printer, you've got a printer head that moves back and forth across the page. It's got nine pins arranged vertically. That's why we call it the nine pin printer. Although you could find higher resolution dot matrix printers with more pins, but I'll, I'm going to stick with nine pin here. Uh, so as the head moves from left to right, it strikes these pins through a ribbon onto paper, it makes a little dot for each pin. And so if you arrange those dots, you can make letters and nine pin printers used up to five columns of dots, although they could actually uh, hit between those five columns. It really is more like nine pins across two, because you got one across uh, between each one of those five. Uh, but I'm going to use here the simplest uh, case. And so just a straight grid of nine uh, by five. Now for this printer, I'm further simplifying it uh, by using, as you can see here, uh, just eight pins. Uh, so here I've labeled them seven through zero uh, to draw each letter. And the last uh, uh, pin, pin nine, I've labeled it pin nine. Uh, it's a little odd, but you'll, you'll understand why in a second. It's dedicated uh, just for printing an underline. So if you have a, a, a one pin sort of gap between each line, uh, you can see that uh, you actually have uh, 10 pins dedicated for each line because that 10th one is really a gap. And if you uh, uh, do the math here, you can actually see, all right, so 66 lines on an 11 inch page, it's really 66 by 11 times 10, uh, it's 60 dots per inch. Uh, and if you use 60 DPI going you know, horizontally as well, but you've got 10 characters per inch, a standard delete text, uh, you can work out the horizontal dimensions of an eight and a half by 11 inch page. And that's what you've got down here uh, as well. And so that that's what really walks us up to uh, having a virtual dot matrix printer if we're assuming 60 DPI for this very simple case where everything's locked into a standard five by eight uh, grid, uh, then you've got a 510 by 660 pixel, eight and a half by 11 uh, sheet of paper. So let me go ahead and exit out of that. And so uh, let's look at the source code here real quick. Uh, it um, it's uh, so I just do a dir, and you can see we just do a v. Uh, actually, let's do a fed on that first here on vp.c. Uh, and so as I said, it's very it's meant to be very very simple. Now it doesn't even do printer controls and it doesn't even do tabs. Uh, and I didn't really spend any time building like a firmware with a different ASCII character. So it really just prints an ASCII uh, bit pattern for each letter instead. But it, it does show uh, what a dot matrix printer was like and all that other stuff can be added later. So here's just a quick walkthrough of what this code looks like. Uh, so generally on this one, I want you to read from the bottom up. And so I'm going to jump all the way down to the bottom of the program. And so here we've got uh, the uh, the main program uh, and what it's doing is uh, basically uh, setting the video mode. Um, there was a comment that outlined there I was doing 640 by 480, but I'm, I've now moved on to 1024 by 768. Uh, it sets the video mode. It, um, uh, you know, does uh, a, a reads a list of files and uh, for each file, it prints it out on the uh on the virtual printer using the print file function. Uh, it also has an initialization up there uh, using a knit printer. And if I jump up here a little bit, you can see there's a knit printer. And really all that's doing is defining a global structure called printer that's defining the size of the of the page and is defining some other values as well. Uh, and uh, it's allocating uh, memory for firmware, which, as I said, I didn't have time to implement firmware. So all it really does actually is it just fakes it, uh, as you can see here, by uh, by just loading a bit pattern uh, for each uh, ASCII character between 32 and 127. Those are the printable uh, lower ASCII. 
and uh, so really just getting a uh, a a bit pattern instead of actually printing out a real letter uh but i am doing a, a space for for ascii 32 that's an actual space uh once we do that then it uh it uses the print file function we jump up here a little bit there's the uh, print file and print files very short <laughs> all it's really doing uh is reading the, the the file one character at a time i'm not worried about is this the fastest way to do it because dot matrix printers are pretty slow anyway so uh if i slow it down accidentally by using just the very simple f get c uh method to read a file that's okay with me and then once it reads that character it just prints it on the virtual printer uh skipping up a little bit and so there's the print care function uh, and all it really is doing is just taking that character uh looking up the value uh, so it, you can see at the beginning here, if it's a control code, it tries to deal with it. As I said earlier, it doesn't even manage any control codes except character turn a new line. Um, and uh, it has, uh, if it's a printable ASCII, then it just looks up the value in uh, the firmware and then prints that uh, eight by five, uh, you know, uh, bit pattern. Uh, onto the uh, onto the printer. So normally, if they would actually loaded a real you know character set into the virtual firmware, uh, those five uh, elements, those five uh, uh, bytes, would actually define a real uh, letter. And so it's just using the print byte function uh, to print each one of those uh, five bytes. Uh, and if I jump up a little bit further. There's the beginning of print byte, and all it's really doing is just doing a uh, a bit of uh, work to try and uh, basically arrange a series of dots on the screen. This part is a bit slow, <laughs> but again, it doesn't really matter because uh, dot matrix printers were also very slow. If you want to artificially slow down the printer even further and adding a one millisecond delay between each character uh, you can see i've commented out uh, that line right here uh, but it uh, that makes it really unbearably slow to watch <laughs> on a screen here uh, but we can look at that in a little bit um, and uh, it it doesn't do underlining yet but it, it does have the ability to support underlining so if underlining has been set uh, it'll do that right here a little bit further up uh, is actually where it uh, prints out new lines. And so it's just basically if it reaches the end of a line, it pushes uh, a new line and uh, it does have the ability to set uh, support for uh, character turn being added for Unix systems. Uh, and if you've ever managed a, a Unix system or tried to connect a Linux system to a dot matrix printer, you get that staircase effect. It's because it doesn't support or doesn't provide Unix, doesn't provide a carriage return. DOS does. DOS provides carriage return and new line. And so this is providing a little bit of support uh, if you uh, want to feed it a Unix file. Uh, and then um, here's where it defines a new page really all it's doing is just putting a line down the right hand side of the screen uh, and then waiting for me to uh, press a key uh, which happens up here with the pause function and then at the very top of the screen uh, top of the file is that uh, structure that i mentioned that's just defining a global structure uh, for the uh, for the printer all right so that's all background <laughs> so let's actually uh quit this and let's look at a sample file so i've got a file here called readme um which we were looking at earlier and let's run that through the virtual printer pp readme uh oh and i need to compile it first so let's go ahead and compile it so i've got a, a batch file here called build which will go ahead and compile that using the watcom compiler and linker and now we've got a vp program and so we'll do vp on readme and there it is <laughs> look at that i've got an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper up on the screen uh and it's printing out uh text uh now again it doesn't do tabs and so the tabs are not going to show up uh, but this file doesn't have tabs uh and uh and i didn't load the actual characters but it's it's right there i mean that's 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 what a dot matrix printer uh is like now this doesn't fill up more than a page it's just filling up a uh 
uh, it's just filling a part of a page. Now it just it, hit any key will actually move on to the next uh, page, or if that's the last page, just hitting any key will exit the program. Uh, I also have a couple other sample files in here. I have a file called uh, 67.txt, which I was using as a uh, sample file. It's 67 uh, character, 67 lines long, and the first line is. Uh, 85 characters wide, which is why it wraps. And uh, that's because at 10 characters per inch and an eight and a half by 11 uh, sheet of paper, eight and a half inches wide, that means it can actually do 85 characters wide. So uh, let me break out of that and we'll do VP on 67.txt. And look at that, <laughs> it's printed out uh, 85 characters across the uh, the top and uh, it's filled, uh, it's just counting uh, line numbers there on the left-hand side, uh, all the way down to 66. And there is actually 67 lines in this file. So if I hit any, any uh, key on the keyboard, like I'll do space, we can now see the, uh, uh, the 67 on page two. And of course it's pause waiting for me to exit the program. So I just hit space and there it is. Now, if you have a file that has tabs in it, I said that it doesn't support tabs. There is a program in here called untab.c. Um, and it looks like this. It's just a very simple uh, program to convert uh, tabs to spaces. Uh, and um, just uh, the source code for that untab.c doesn't have any tabs and so we can actually run uh, vp on untab.c and there's the source code <laughs> to uh, the untab program it's uh, being printed using our virtual printer uh, and uh, and there it is now uh, it's it takes up more than a page and so it's waiting for me to uh, to hit a key so you can move on to page two there it is and there's page two and so that's the source code to untab. Now uh, let's actually go in and edit uh, the uh, the VP uh, dot, dot uh, C program. So we'll do fed on VP dot C. And I think it was around line 114, I think, was where it actually, uh, I have a commented out uh, line where you can add a delay. And so right here, yep, on line 114, I've commented out a delay statement. So using delay will add a millisecond delay between printing each uh, byte to the printer. Now that's is actually too long, but it is kind of cool to watch a uh, you know the dot matrix printer actually draw it in uh, you know live in front of you. Uh, for a long file, this will take forever, uh, but it's probably worth doing uh, for a, a small file like that 67, uh, dot txt file. So we have uncommented delay. And of course, at the top of the file, we need to make sure that ID six has been uncommented. And so right now that's been commented out. So let's, we'll just uncomment that. And now we can do file and then save, and then we'll go ahead and rebuild it. It rebuilds everything, but that's okay. And now we'll run, uh, VP on 67.txt. And remember this has that, now it has a millisecond delay between printing uh, each uh, byte. Uh, every basically as the printer head moved to the right, it actually is gonna have a little bit of a delay, a millisecond delay between each uh, byte that it prints to the screen. And that means that every character is made up of five bytes uh, plus a one byte uh, space. Uh, it's going to be uh, a little slow. Actually, there's it, there's actually a little bug in there. Let me, let me fix the bug here real quick. And so fed uh, vp.c, jump back down to line 114. Um, and so I mentioned this on my Patreon, those of you who are on Patreon, uh, the, the better way to do this. So the what's getting passed into the function here is uh, a byte value B. And so it's actually better right here. If rather than doing a delay for everything, if it doesn't actually have anything to print, probably no point in having a delay. So we'll do an if B, then we'll actually add a delay. And if there isn't uh, a value being passed to it, if it's zero, uh, then we will, um, oh, actually it's already been, uh, why am I doing that? Because it's actually already in there. There's already an if B up here. Uh, so it actually uh, doesn't have to add that. And so we can actually undo that. We'll just do uh, quit and we'll abandon our change. 
and that now let's go ahead and just run uh, VP on 67.txt and we'll watch it draw to the screen. <laughs> and so, yeah, this is a lot slower than an actual dot matrix printer. Um, but you know, we'll just pretend it was a, it was an old dot matrix printer. Maybe it's trying to print in really high resolution mode, uh, which would take a little while, not quite this long. Uh, but, but, uh, this is what a dot matrix printer, uh, looked like now, uh, while it's printing out the rest of this page, I'll just mention, I'm, I'm planning to write an article about, uh, how, uh, you know, different, uh, dot matrix printers worked, uh, and I needed something that, that I could use as a demonstration for, uh, dot matrix printing output. And so that's, that was probably primary reason number one for writing this program. Uh, another one was I had a conversation with somebody a while back, uh, and they said that at a conference, they set up a dot matrix printer and, uh, let people print out, uh, things from, uh, you know, a, a, like a graphics program and make a, like a greeting card or something on a dot matrix printer. And it was one of those things that you were meant to look at. I finished the page and we'll hit space to go to the next one. It was one of those things where you were meant to only, you know, start the print job and then come back later to actually pick it up when it was done. But people wanted to hang around the booth and actually watch it draw. <laughs> and so, um, that was the other kind of reason I made this program is so you can actually watch it draw, uh, if that's something you wanted to do. And now you can do it without, uh, wasting printer or, or, or rather wasting paper or wasting a, a ribbon. Uh, anyway, so that is a, a virtual printer that simulates a, a classic and very simplified nine pin printer. Uh, what'd you think about that, uh, uh, program in the video? Let me know in the comments below. I'll also, uh, add in the, in the video description, a link to my uh, GitHub where I have the source code, uh, for the virtual printer. Thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. I know I say that a lot, but you really do give me the ability to take some time off from my consulting to uh, make videos and keep the website up to date, things like that. Uh, some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and you, uh, I wanted to thank you especially uh, here for that. Uh, don't forget, of course, to uh, like and subscribe. That really does help the channel. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Mastodon. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.